Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will classify all finite dimensional irreducible representations of SL2. So, let us begin with uh, some basic observations about uh, SL2 representations. So, let us start with uh, V being a finite dimensional representation of SL2. Suppose uh, uh, V is V actually written as uh, direct sum of uh, H eigenspaces. So, let us call like V A to be the eighth eigenspace, okay. That means this is those vectors in capital V such that H V acts as A V, okay. So, it could be 0 or it could be non 0, but anyway, let us assume that uh, this is non 0 inside V, but anyway, so we are going to just uh, see the action of X on this. So, not a problem. So, for A in C, so this is called uh, A eigen space okay, or weight space. So, if we take this weight space corresponding to the weight, weight uh, A, so A is called weight. So, then uh, we are going to see that uh, how other elements of SL2, basis elements of SL2 acts on this. So, if we take X and then act it on VA, then one can prove that it indeed decreases the value of A by 2. So, this is going to send VA to VA minus 2. And then if we take Y and then apply it on VA, so, then it is going to send V A to V A plus 2. So, these are the two important uh, observations. So, here for any A, V A denotes the weight space corresponding to the weight A. So, this is the definition of V A. Now, let us check this. Let us start with the vector V in V A. Okay. If it is 0, then there is nothing to prove. Otherwise, what will happen? We want to calculate what will happen to x v. Okay, but what we know there is this relationship between h and x. The bracket h x is given by h x minus x h. Okay, which is exactly equal to given by two x. Okay, now if you take these elements and then apply it on v, then what we get? We get exactly h x v equal to x h v minus 2 x v. But note that h v is nothing but a v. So, x h v is going to be x a v which is going to be a x v. So, that tells you that this is going to be a x v minus 2 x v. So, that tells you that you can take x v out. So, this is going to be a minus 2 times x v. So, h of x v is given by a minus 2 x v. So, that means the weight of x v if it is non 0 is going to be equal to a minus 2. So, then it is clear from this calculation that x applied on V A is going to be subspace of A V A, v a minus 2. And similarly, if we take V in V A and apply Y V and what will be the H eigen value of that? So, we are not only saying that the it is mapped to something, it is also H eigen vector okay, if it is not 0. So, H of Y V is going to be again similarly h y is equal to h y minus y v equal to minus 2 y. So, this is oh sorry this is h. So, this is y h v minus 2 y v. Similar calculation says that this is going to be a. So, h v is a v oh sorry this is going to be minus So, h x uh, yeah 
so we are calculating uh, hxv sorry or it should be the other way so when you apply x it should increase when you apply y it should decrease actually so because hx is xh plus 2x so this is going to be plus 2 and this is going to be plus so this is going to be plus and when you apply y this is going to be minus because hy is yh minus 2y so this is going to be av ayv minus 2yv so that is going to give us a minus 2yv hyv okay so basically h uh, eigen value is a then x actually increases that a to a plus 2 and then y actually decreases that to a minus 2 okay so now uh, from this one can immediately conclude that if we take any non zero sl2 module then that must contain some highest weight vector okay so as a corollary we can see that if v is non zero sl2 module of course finite dimensional then v contains a non zero of course by definition it's a non zero highest weight vector highest weight vector so recall what is highest weight vector okay something called highest weight vector so let's call it u which is inside capital v and it is highest weight vector with uh, highest weight let's say a in c so then h u should be a u and then x u should be 0 okay so that is why it is called highest weight vector because the weight is not increased by the action of SL2. So uh, what is the proof? The proof is you start with V being actually uh, non zero SL2 module. So that means H will have some Eigen vector, will have Eigen vector inside capital V because H is being operator and we are working over complex numbers any operator will have Eigen value so there will be corresponding Eigen vector. Take that Eigen vector to be V which is inside uh, capital V let us say the Eigen value is B okay this is the weight of this V. So weight of V is B. So B could be 0 and we do not need to worry about it so now what happens if you apply x if you apply x on v so this is going to lie inside v b plus 2 because the action of h x actually increases the weight by 2 so that means if you apply x on v that is going to give you v b plus 2 now you keep applying okay keep applying x so then what will happen so we will be getting x power i v which is going to lie inside b plus 2 i note that b plus 2 i are all are distinct values inside c so if x i v if it is actually non zero for all i then that will give you distinct eigen eigen vectors for the distinct eigen values b plus 2 i so then using that you can produce infinitely many linearly independent vectors inside capital V. So that is not going to happen because V is assumed to be finite dimensional. So that implies that there exist i inside z plus such that x power i v is 0. Now you take u to be x power i v then it is clear that h u is nothing but b plus 2 y u and then x power x times u is nothing but 0 okay you take 
i minus 1, here you get i minus 1. So, you take u to be x power i minus 1 v because x power i v is 0. So, then x u becomes 0 and since u is Eigen vector for h, so it has the corresponding Eigen value. So, a you take it to be b plus 2 i minus 1. So, that means uh, we have high, highest weight vector inside capital V. So, now what we can do with this highest weight vector, okay, you start with V which is a finite dimensional, finite dimensional uh, representation of SL2. So, let us say V which is non-zero highest weight vector inside, highest weight uh, vector with weight let us say capital A, sorry small a. So, as of now we know that this weight can be only complex number. Okay. Now, using this weight let us see what one can do. So, let us just relabel maybe we can actually call this W naught. Okay. So, W naught is the highest weight vector with the weight A. So, now we know that H W naught is equal to A W naught and x w naught is equal to 0. So, as before we have this w naught that is coming from our earlier lecture. Okay. Now, you see what one can do using w naught. Now, we can actually apply y on w naught and then consider various powers of y applied on w naught and then see what one can get it from that. So, let us take uh, this uh, decorated vector call it w i. So, this coefficients not coefficient the scalars are adjust so that the formulas works very well. Okay. So, let this w i to be the following vector you take 1 divided by i factorial times y power i w naught. Okay. So, basically what we are interested in we are interested in understanding SL2 sub module generated by w naught. So, SL2 sub module generated by W naught. So, that is what we are interested in. So, indeed we are going to prove the SL2 sub module generated by W naught can be obtained from W naught by applying various powers of Y. So, we do not need to really worry about the H, H action or W action sorry uh, X action. So, the H action is going to give you scalar on W naught X is going to kill. But instead of taking various powers of h, x and y, so that is the way to get a sub module generated by w naught. So, we are going to say that uh, it is enough to take only the powers of y and then we can still get a sub module of uh, uh, generated by w naught. So, this is something we have seen already. So, this is simple exercise which says that this is going to be span of some complex number where you can take some some like all possible powers okay like x power some m1 h power m2 and then okay let's call it sigma of this m3 where this m1 m2 and m3 these are all various powers so exponents running over z plus and this sigma is just a permutation of these three letters x, h and y. So, if you take all possible permutation and all possible powers and then you apply it on w naught, then you will be getting this entire span of this uh, SL2 sub module generated by w naught. But now what we are going to climb, this is the powerful climb indeed, this SL2 module generated by w naught is going to be just span of this w i's. Okay. So, then later we will see that uh, there we can choose some power such a way that uh, uh, something will be actually killed. Okay. Okay. So, let us let us try to prove this one by one. So, we will actually once we set this w i which is 1 divided by i factorial times y power i w naught. So, then one can see that this S L 2 model generated by w naught this has this very explicit basis 
okay so indeed one can prove much more stronger statement the basis of this so this is uh, span by so this is the basis w0 w1 etc wm okay and these w y's uh, they are basis of this sl2 module sub module generated by w0 inside this capital v okay so this is uh, uh, the action of sl2 on these vectors are given as follows so when you take h acting on wy you are going to get m minus 2y wy so this this is exactly the formula that we have seen already okay so this is the formula that you see it in uh, sm so x wy is going to be m minus i plus 1 uh, w i minus 1 where we said that w minus 1 is 0 and then i varies from 0 to m okay and y wy is going to be i plus 1 wi plus 1 again we said that w m plus 1 is 0 and again i runs over 0 to m okay so uh, to prove that it is indeed sl2 sub module uh, we need to actually check uh, so obviously like if you take the sl2 sub module generated by w0 so that is going to contain all this uh, w0 etc wm because they are all powers of uh, y power applied on w0 okay so the one uh, side is obvious so the, to prove the other side what we will prove we will take this uh, span of this okay then we directly prove that it is going to be sl2 sub module then that is going to say that uh, because this is sl2 sub module containing w0 so this must contain the sub module generated by w0 so then that will force that these two modules are same okay let us call this is uh, w1 and this is w2. Now it is clear that w1 contains w2, okay, w1 contains w2, this is easy. Why? Because w0 in w2 and if you take y power w0 that is going to lie inside w1 that forces w2 is contained in w1. okay so now we to prove the other side to prove w2 contains w1 it is enough to prove that w2 is indeed sl2 module sl2 sub module so once you prove it is sl2 sub module then the w0 is being inside w2 will imply the sub module generated by w2 which is w1 is subset of w2 so that will imply that w2 is equal to w1 so this is the strategy to prove this is indeed sl2 sub module we need to check that these formulas indeed gives you SL2 action. So that I will leave it as exercise because this is routine routine exercise. Okay, whenever you take uh, H X minus X H applied on W Y, then you should get two X W Y. This is the one thing that you need to check. Similarly, there are other two formulas that also one can check. So check that. Okay, check that w2 is sl2 sub module okay this is plain computation so we don't want to check now we will verify these formulas okay once we verify these formulas uh, 
the, then these formulas also actually immediately tells that. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, we do not need to check these things because it is already part of capital V. So, these formulas immediately tells you that uh, W 2 is indeed submodule. So, we do not need to check anything. So, only thing we need to check is we need to check that uh, these formulas are true. So, let us check that. Okay, maybe I will check uh, uh, only the uh, first formulas. Okay, so it's easy to see that uh, if you apply y on w y, so this is going to be y one divided by i factorial applied on y power i w naught. So this is going to give me exactly one divided by i factorial y power i plus one w naught. So, then this is you multiply i plus 1 and then divided by i plus 1. So, then it gives me exactly i plus 1 times w i plus 1. So, the third formula is easy to verify. Okay. So, this is done. So, now let us verify the first formula h w i should be m minus 2 i w i. Again that can be verified uh, directly using the commutation relations. Okay. So, for example, if we, we know already that if y v is sorry, if h v is a v, then y h acting on y v is going to be a minus 2 okay let's check the formula so here so hyv is a minus 2 yv so if you use that formula so we get uh, hyv equal to a minus 2 yv so now by induction you can see that h y power iv Okay, 1 divided by i factorial. So, that is what we want to compute. So, this is going to be h 1 by i. Okay. So, let me take it out 1 by i h y acting on w i minus 1. This is going to give me, so by induction you can assume that y i w sorry, by induction you can assume that h w i minus 1 is going to be exactly m minus twice i minus 1 w i minus 1. So, using that you can see that so, this is going to give us 1 by i h, oh sorry, this is the formula that I am using. So, this is going to be, th use this formula. So, m minus twice i minus 1 minus 2 and then y times w i minus 1. So, y times w i minus 1 is going to be again i times w i. Okay. So, this is going to be i times w i. So, then we get h w i equal to m minus 2 i plus 2 minus 2. So, this get cancelled. So, here 1 divided by i is there. So, this i, this i get cancelled and gives you w i. So, h w i is exactly m minus 2 i w i. Okay, this is also verified. So, now I will leave it to you to check uh, that uh, the third formula x w i is nothing but m minus i plus 1 times y uh, w i minus 1. Okay. So, basically these formulas are true and these formulas immediately tells that because V is SL2 submodule, 
SL2 module. So, the span of W0 etc Wm is also SL2 sub module and that forces that W1 has to be equal to W2. So, in particularly all the eigen uh, values of uh, H I eigen values of these vectors they are all distinct. So, this will be linearly independent. So, that will form a basis for this uh, SL2 module generated by W0. So, now what is the immediate corollary of this result? If you start with uh, irreducible representation, okay, so immediate corollary, if V is finite dimensional irreducible SL2 representation, then by using the early result there exist uh, uh, highest weight vector of highest weight m. Okay. So, sorry we have used this uh, highest weight as a. So, maybe I should actually tell you that uh, what is the connection between A and M. Okay, I will stop. Thank you, I will stop here.